Okay, and the purpose of today is to show you three tools that allow for rapid e-learning development. And we'll be creating SCORM files from each of these tools and uploading to an LMS. So we will actually be creating three separate e-learning pieces and showing you how quickly you can uh, use these tools uh, to create e-learning content and then upload to an LMS. We've got an LMS as well that we'll be uploading uh, the content to. Uh, first I'll be using Presenter Video Express to showcase some screen capturing and also host sharing. So this particular software allows you to share what you're doing on the screen and also show the host while they are presenting the software. We're going to upload this to the LMS as well. Uh, then we're going to be using PowerPoint to create a rapid e-learning piece uh, using a, an Adobe plugin for PowerPoint called Presenter. And the benefit of this is that a lot of the hard work's already done in PowerPoint. And uh, for those of you who know PowerPoint, then you're well and truly on your way to create some really engaging e-learning. And the good thing about Presenter for PowerPoint is being able to uh, package the PowerPoint presentation into a SCORM file to then upload to the LMS. Uh, we'll also look at some key tips when using Presenter in PowerPoint. Uh, a couple of things I'll, I'll bring to your attention, uh, just to be mindful of when using this particular tool. And then we're going to move on to Captivate, Adobe Captivate, to uh, create some rapid e-learning as well. And we'll look at packaging the e-learning from Captivate and uploading to our LMS. So all in all, we're going to create three separate e-learning pieces uh, in each of the tools and upload them to the LMS. So the, the, the first tool I wanted to bring to your attention was a tool called uh, presenter, which is here in, in front of us. Um, I'm just going to uh, show you the front screen. Uh, I'll just uh, minimize everything else uh, that we're looking at here, just to minimize any confusion. And the purpose of this particular uh, bit of software is to allow you to create a demonstration of some software while also showing the host who's presenting that demonstration. And the example we'll use uh, is, we'll just create a quick Excel example of adding some things up in Excel. And we'll also look at the Adobe Presenter uh, Video Express editing features that allow you to add some extra post-production type of effects and also lots of control in the final video. So we'll get well, well and truly underway. Uh, what I might also need to do is turn off the webcam for this particular uh, little part of the session because the webcam is needed for this next bit of software and the webcam can't actually uh, use two bits of software at the same time. So I'm just going to turn our um, webcam off. So, okay, so here we are in uh, Presenter Video Express and the first thing that we do is we just make sure that we've got the software ready and as I said, we're going to be using Excel. Presenter Video Express actually records the whole screen so we can't really focus on a particular application so you really need to have your environment ready and in this particular case, we need to make sure uh, that we've got Excel ready. Um, and we're just going to create a small sum in the corner, up in the top left-hand corner. And we'll be able to use the Adobe Presenter uh, post-production effects to be able to zoom in and uh, pan around the software. So without further ado, let's get into it. So we're going to create a new project. Uh, the good thing about this, is, and hopefully you can see me again uh, up on the screen, uh, the first thing that the software needs to do is um, it, it actually wants to put a background in. As you can see, I've got a pretty uh, bland and boring white background. 
uh, so we can actually change the background quite easily. So we've got a little button here, make my background awesome. This can be changed in post-production as well. So I'm just going to click the button, uh, take a snapshot. And what this does is it allows you to highlight your figure in the software. So you see I'm going to just draw a line down there. And you've also got to draw a line across there. And you'll see that it's actually picked out your surroundings. And you can just click on, on fully selected. And you'll notice that the background has changed, which is pretty cool. Uh, and I can just click my preview looks good and you can actually change the background to say, okay, I want to be in, um, in the library or I want to be in an office or I want to be in the mountains. And no one would ever believe that I wasn't in the mountains. So I'm going to uh, pretend I'm in the mountains. The next thing we're going to do is click the record button to begin recording. Now, what happens here is Presenter actually records two separate things at the same time. It records the webcam, uh, the video that, uh, of the presenter, and it's also recording the software in the background. So in post-production, we have the ability of switching back and forth between uh, the host and the software. So uh, are we ready? We're going to count down, record, uh, five, four, Three, two, one. Shift end to end the recording as well. And if you record too much, you can edit this out. Uh, as I'm uh, rambling on now, this bit can be edited out in uh, post production. Anyway, here we go. So here we are in Excel, and we're just going to add some things up. So I'm just going to go up into the top left hand corner. I'm going to type in uh, 10, and I'm going to type in 20, and then I want to add these numbers up. So selecting the cell. And then there's an auto sum button. So I'm going to click on the auto sum button and then press enter. And there is our answer, 30. So hopefully that is correct. And that is how you add numbers up in Excel. So now I'm going to finish the recording. So shift end to finish that recording. And you'll now notice that the presenter screen comes up. Okay, so this is where we can actually do a bit of magic uh, post-production. So if I was just to play that straight away, that's quite loud, isn't it? That's quite loud, so um, sounds like the audio works quite well. Um, so we'll be able to have a look at uh, fixing the audio up as well. Um, but you'll notice that as I play that, it's just showing the video of the presenter. But what we can do using these buttons down here, we can decide when we want to bring in the actual software itself. So for example, say here at this part of the video, I'll just check. So about here, I might want to start bringing in Excel. So this is where I can switch to the actual software itself or the presentation of the software. So if I click that button, you'll now notice that the timeline down the bottom changes. And if I just go back a little bit and press play, and you'll notice that it just uh, quickly switches from the presenter view to the software view. Now there is a little bit of a better way of doing this. We might want a little bit of a transition so what we can do here is we've got this button here, which actually shows both the presenter and the software. So if I click on that button, you'll now notice that if we, so you see there, we can just, and what we can also do, maybe we don't want the presenter going to the left, but we would want them going to the right. So if we actually, See, as I click, keep clicking that button, you'll notice that the presenter changes from the left or to the right. So now, if I... Uh, and there we go. And you'll see that how I switched over to the, uh, to, to the right side of the screen. And now what we can do is we've got the option of now going right into the actual software. So if I click the green button and you'll notice how we can make this. Uh, 
and you'll see there that um, as we move to the software, now I might decide that I want to zoom in to that top left hand corner. So I've got a little zoom button here where I can uh, pan and zoom. So about there, I might decide that I want to zoom into that top left hand corner. And you'll now notice that if we go back here, So you can see it doesn't take long to get a pretty uh, pretty neat and uh, um, snazzy looking uh, presentation going on. So there's lots of other things that we could do uh, with this, of course, um, and we can change the, uh, the background, uh, we, can, we can draw on the screen, uh, we can add a quiz, uh, we can change some branding as well. You'll notice that we've got a logo uh, down here, which we've been able to add as well, like a watermark. Uh, so there's lots of things that you can do with the actual final presentation. So say we were ready to uh, publish that to our learning management system. We've got a publish button. So we can click the um, publish button there, and I'm just going to call this Excel sum example. And if I click yes there, and it's now going to um, wait to get that ready. And now I'm just going to actually publish that to the computer. And it will then ask me if I want to um, view that. And I can also publish it to our learning management system or straight into YouTube as well. So just while that's working, just something that we have prepared earlier. Uh, so if we were in our learning management system, and just to show you how this will play in a learning uh, management system, um, this is uh, Adobe Prime, uh, which is uh, an example of an LMS. And what we can do is we can go into, um, uh, here we go, that's, uh, that has just published. And there's the example of the video that we've just created. So I'll just um, open that up. And uh, so there's a the video there. And if we were to upload it to our um, learning management system, you'll see that uh, it would look uh, very much uh, like it does on the screen. And of course, because it's in an LMS, it'll get tracked and you can report on people watching this video. And also, hopefully that audio is good for you. So that's an example of something that we did earlier. And you can, of course, track that to make sure people have actually seen it. So that's a pretty neat little uh, tool there. That's called Presenter Video Express. You can see how quick uh, uh, quickly you can get something up and running and up into your LMS as well. Okay, so we're going to move on to the next tool and the next tool is actually uh, Presenter. So as I said, this uh, particular tool is part of PowerPoint. When you load it, you'll see you have a tab up the top called Presenter. Now, a lot of the hard work is done in PowerPoint itself. Uh, so adding the content, putting the words in, we can even add video. You'll see I've got a, you can see I've got a video in here, um, just being able to bring in some uh, points there. These uh, points do also, uh, or you see that we've got animations against these uh, bullet points. So any animations and also transitions between slides will actually uh, be uh, enabled with the presenter package. So when we publish this to the uh, learning management system, it will maintain all of the PowerPoint animations and also any transitions between slides, which is, which is really great. Uh, some pretty cool stuff here, which I'll show you. Um, this is an interaction which is actually part of the presenter tab. So this is outside of PowerPoint, so to speak, even though we're inside of PowerPoint. But this little uh, example here, um, I'll show you how this works. It's quite cool. Uh, you can insert um, different types of um, interactive elements. Uh, so they've got all sorts of different uh, ways of, 
um, creating interaction between um, uh, with your users. So, for example, you've got Hangman here. Uh, a good one is a jigsaw puzzle. I quite like this. Uh, so I'm going to browse for an image. Uh, I might make it really hard. So you could have a logo or you could have a site uh, of uh, your office, so one of the sites, and you want people to create uh, or fix the jigsaw based on a location of, of the office. Uh, so that's a jigsaw puzzle. So if we click on OK, and there it is. So if we were to preview that, I'm just actually going to preview uh, from uh, this particular um, slide, so preview from slide, creates a little preview which allows you to see how the end user will be able to interact with this particular interaction and the rest of the slides. And that's the little loading screen that we've got. And you'll see what happens here is this is the interaction that we've just inserted. So you'll see that people have to basically create the, um, the jigsaw. You'll see there's a timer as well. So this could be just a, a, a neat way of being able to um, give people a bit of a break from a course. Uh, I should be pretty good at this now because uh, I've uh, done this a few times. So hopefully I know uh, all of the different um, pieces. But uh, yeah, hopefully you see how that works. And of course you can reset and that um, will jumble it up again. With the skin that you see here, you can actually control the skin and uh, that's actually done through the theme. Uh, so if we just go into the, the theme button up here, and you'll see uh, with the theme, it allows you to control uh, colors. So you've got appearance of colors where you might want the sidebar to be displayed. So we can switch that over to the other side, uh, or you can take the sidebar off uh, as well. And you can also decide what different panels that you want to have displayed as part of that final output. Uh, you can also change the background image. That's something that uh, I did earlier. I just added a background image to that uh, particular presentation. Uh, it's probably a good idea also to ma uh, make this screen or this window a little bit bigger, just to give you a really good idea as to how that's going to look. Uh, a couple of other things you might have noticed with the preview that we had before, where you had the presenter photograph and maybe a little bit of a bio, that's all controlled through the settings. And we can go in here and we can change and add information about the presenter, you've got logos and biographies and, and things like that. So there's a lot of extra bits and pieces that you need to consider as part of the presenter package or packaging uh, within presenter. Uh, you can also uh, obviously include um, quizzes as well. Don't get too thrown off by all these text boxes down the bottom here because they'll only be displayed um, as needed, depending on whether the person got the uh, question right or wrong, uh, whether they need to answer the question before click, clicking submit. And that's actually done through the uh, add quiz uh, button here, which we've got. Uh, any other quizzes that are in there or any other questions that are in there can be managed uh, through the manage button within the group uh, of buttons there. And we can just click on edit, we can go in and update questions and add extra responses and change the quiz from multiple response to single response and, and back again and things like that. So that's all um, very, very easy to manage. And of course, when we want to publish it to, um, to either our LMS uh, or we want to publish it as a PDF even, we can uh, publish that as a PDF. So there's some pretty cool options available, uh, upload it to uh, Adobe Prime, publish it to the computer uh, as well. Both SWF and HTML5 format is available. And once again, once you've published that, you can upload that to your LMS. And something that we did or ha uh, have done earlier just to prepare ourselves for this, 
uh, we do have that particular an example similar to that that was done in presenter ready for uh, viewing. I've just got a little bit of a slow connection here, but that's okay. These things happen. And I'm just going to go back to courses. Uh, we're going to go to draft here and overview of presenter. And just to show you how a presenter package will look in an LMS. So this is just previewing this as a learner would preview it. So we're in presenter now or in the, the, the LMS uh, viewing a, an example of a presenter uh, file. So hopefully that will come up soon. And uh, meanwhile, while that's loading, hopefully that's going to load. That, um, I just might try that again. to try another example. We did have that working uh, the other day. Okay, we'll come back to that. Uh, to publish your presenter file, it is just a case of going into uh, publish uh, to the computer. So we're going to publish as a zip package. I uh, will publish that. Uh, into, up to, onto the desktop and let's try that again. And there's also the option to provide feedback to the quiz as well. And once a person has completed the quiz, they will get their score appearing and they can go back and actually review the quiz, review any of the questions and the answers that they that they gave. Uh, I'm just going to go in and actually update this particular uh, content. Okay. Let's uh, try that again. So we'll upload a brand new uh, presenter file. I'm just going to see that upload. So it's about 50 meg. So that'll uh, that'll upload. Now, just while that's uploading, let's have a look at Captivate. So I'll leave presenter open. We'll come back and have a quick look at that before we uh, finish. So with uh, with Captivate, of course, uh, we've got Captivate uh, nine. Uh, which is the previous version of, of Captivate. And we've also got, um, as you can see there, it says Adobe Captivate 9. And a new version of Captivate that just came out is Adobe Captivate 2017. Now, they're very, very similar. There are a couple of differences, which I'll go through as part of this um, last bit of the presentation. Uh, we'll just see if that's uploaded yet. That's at 75%. So first of all, the whole idea of this is to show you how we can create some quick, rapid e-learning um, using uh, a lot of the inbuilt features and functionality of, of Captivate. So I'm going to go back into Captivate 9 and I'm just going to create a brand new uh, blank project. So you can see I'm just going to click blank and be mindful of the end device uh, resolution that you're going to be handling. So if a lot of your users are going to be using an iPad or even a phone, you can choose different uh, custom resolutions here. But I'm just going to uh, have a look at 1024 by 768. And I'm going to click on the Create button. Now, straight off the bat, if you haven't used Captivate before and you want to get something created really Quickly, there's some really cool stuff to allow you to do this um, very, very quickly. So first of all, the first thing I wanted to bring to your attention is that we've got these inbuilt themes that come with the software. So if you're in a hurry and you've only just installed the software for the first time 
and you don't really know where to start and you think, okay, well, let's just get something that looks good to sell back to the stakeholders, to show them, hey, we can make something that looks uh, decent. Uh, we can go into the themes and you've got uh, some pre built themes that already exist as part of the software. So I'm just going to uh, select one here. Um, I'll just go and click on this one here. And applying the theme will automatically give you your colors and your uh, photo photographs and imagery and fonts. And themes is something that you can actually create your own themes at a later stage. I'm going to turn the webcam on uh, again now that I've um, turned presenter off. Uh, so I'll just go back to Captivate. So what we've uh, what we've seen here is we've seen uh, the ability to choose from different themes to be able to quickly uh, create a, a really uh, decent looking uh, presentation. So I might just go in and um, add, a, add a title. Uh, so we've got uh, Welcome to Captivate. I'm just going to uh, add a button as well. Um, just by clicking on interactions, uh, we'll put a button down here. All the buttons are already uh, predefined as well. And I can just uh, click continue, continue. And with this button, we want to define, okay, what happens when people uh, click on the button? We've got a little actions here and it says go to next slide. So straight away, we've set up a welcome slide and we are allowing people to click on a continue button to then go to the next slide. So we're going to add a brand new slide by clicking on the slides button up here and it's actually going to be a blank slide. Now the reason why I wanted to show you a blank slide is because using a similar concept that we did before, we can actually now call on uh, not only the themes but we've got some predefined layouts. A little bit similar to PowerPoint if, you've, uh, if you're familiar with the PowerPoint layouts. Uh, we can go over here to the slide properties. Uh, we can select one of many different types of layouts that are already pre-built as part of the theme. Uh, so for example, we might have an objective slide here and you can see straight away that um, all of this really cool stuff has happened. Uh, so I can just go in and say um, objectives uh, and then we might be able to say something like um, uh, rapid uh, e-learning e uh, development. Um, we've got uh, staff engagement. So just uh, bringing some things up here. Uh, we're also probably going to talk about the Christmas party, um, and we're also going to talk about um, performance review. So just making some things up. Um, and once again, uh, we can also include a button uh, to show or to give people a choice as to when uh, they're ready to, to go uh, onto the next screen after they've, after they've read those. So you can see the pretty quickly we can get some, uh, some content in there and actually make it look good. Now just to see how this looks uh, to the end user, Every now and then you may want to do a quick preview. So I'm going to do a proper preview of the whole project um, just to see what this looks like. So you can see pretty much within a few minutes uh, that we've managed to uh, get a uh, get an interactive, uh, a little bit of interaction with the button here. Um, there's our welcome slide. We've got a play bar down the bottom, click continue, and then we can move on to the next uh, slide and we've got um, some content there as well. So look, it's pretty uh, pretty straightforward as far as utilizing the pre-existing uh, designs and the themes are in there just to give you some ideas if you feel a little bit uh, stuck for some inspiration. Uh, this could be a good way just to get the ball rolling and you could uh, very easily go in and then change the theme. So for example, if I decide, okay, well, I want a different theme now, um, it still keeps the content that you had in there, but you've now been able to um, apply a fresh set of uh, colors and uh, fonts and, and so forth. So you see that all of the content is still in there. We might need to just um, uh, move it around a little bit. Uh, 
Um, but you'll see that I don't actually have to retype anything um, and all the content is actually still in there. So this was an example using Captivate 9 and what I am actually going to move uh, towards uh, and show you now is actually Captivate 2017. So we're just going to flick between the screens and you'll probably, you probably won't notice that much of a difference between 2009 and 2017 when it comes to the interface. But a couple of things to point out is uh, with both 2009 and 17, you can create uh, what's called a responsive uh, module or responsive e-learning, which allows you to create content that is viewable on both desktops and also mobile devices. And they have made some uh, pretty good improvements with 2017 uh, when you're creating a responsive project. You've got this uh, preview slider which shows you what the content will look like depending on the resolution. You've also got some pre-built uh, device resolutions here. So if you know that a lot of your users are going to be using an iPad or a, an iPhone, you can see you can see how uh, how it changes the final view of that content. Uh, something that I like to do actually, uh, here's a little bit of a tip for those of you who are developing uh, mobile content. You can develop in uh, a mobile device view like so, but you'll notice on the left here where you have your film strip that it still displays in desktop. So it's like you've actually got a you know, two views uh, at once, which is, which is pretty cool. So. Um, I think maybe they're uh, alluding to a potential uh, future feature where you may actually develop um, across multiple devices or device views at the same time. So you notice here, if I go and change uh, something um, here, an awesome um, overview, um, and you'll notice it's actually updated the, the thumbnail view over here. So I can still get a bit of an idea as to how it's going to look in desktop over here and also in mobile here as well. So that's a pretty cool feature, uh, being able to um, being able to develop in mobile view as well. Uh, another pretty cool feature of the new 2017 Captivate is what's called Fluid Boxes. Now what these do, and these are already pre-built into, um, into the uh, slide layouts that we have over here. And what this does is it allows you to decide how the content will wrap or move as you change the device output. So you'll see here, as I'm moving this out, you'll see that the photograph appears on the left and the words appear underneath. But as we make this smaller, you'll see how the, 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 the content actually shifts. And you'll see here, as we get to a smaller device, the content appears to the right of the image, but I might decide I want that content to go under the image as it's getting smaller. So I've got this option to um, change the, the dynamics of this fluid box. So you see the, uh, the fluid box here, I've got all of these different uh, options appearing. Uh, I can select the particular fluid box that I want to control and I can start determining how this content will act as it changes the responsive view. So there is a little bit of planning involved here and it can take a little bit of time to really get your head around it. Uh, but just as a very high level introduction uh, to this, you'll see that you do have quite a, a lot of control as to how this content will react as you're changing the responsiveness of the, the, the slides and, and overall the presentation. Uh, so some, some pretty interesting things happening with the, the new Adobe uh, Captivate uh, that just came out recently. Now, um, also, video is accommodated um, at a responsive level, so uh, being able to incorporate video from elsewhere. Um, and I'm actually going to recreate this particular example. 
um, and you'll see here that we've got um, a video actually off YouTube, but I'll just show you how we can quickly put that in. So I'm just going to delete that. And the way we put the, the video in is we need to select the, um, the, the, the fluid box that we've got here. So you notice that we're in the fluid box and we're actually going to insert what's called a web object. And that appears straight away in the actual fluid box that we had selected. So I'm just going to delete the, uh, the web address that was there. Now a little bit of a tip for using YouTube videos in uh, Captivate. Uh, you do have this option of being able to open up a YouTube video and then share. Um, but what I like to do is um, instead of sharing this particular URL, because if I put this uh, address into the, uh, the window, you'll notice that what it does is... I'm just going to... Uh, Now the problem with that, you notice that when I put the uh, oh. mm -hmm. uh -uh. I have the preview in my ears, so you can probably hear that. I'm just going to close that down and restart it. Just a little bit of a leftover of the. Um, YouTube preview playing while we had even got the um, good old computers, hey? Anyway, so let's uh, start that back up and we'll open up the, 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 the file that we had open there. Here it comes. Uh, so there it is. So once again, going back to my tip on using YouTube videos, don't actually take the URL that you see in the browser window, because you'll get other parts of the screen appearing in that little container. So what we actually want to do is we want to um, get what's called the embed code. So while you're in the YouTube video, if you go to uh, down the bottom where it says share and then click on embed, and what we're actually going to do is we're just going to grab the web address between the double quotes that's referenced by the source area or the source part of this um, line of uh, code, I guess you could call it. So we're going to take from the HTTPS down to where the uh, text finishes before the double quotes. We're just going to copy that. We'll go back into um, Captivate here. And don't worry about the embed code, we're just going to put the address there because um, I'll show you. If we actually take that address and put it up in the uh, browser address bar, you'll notice that it fills the whole screen. So that's what we want to have happen with this particular container. We want it to fill the whole screen and you see that it's actually been able to do that as well. And uh, once again, as we change the actual um, size, uh, it should stay responsive for us as we change the device output settings as well. And you'll see also we can add quizzes and quiz questions and the cool thing about this is that um, all of the responsive aspects uh, are taken care of with uh, Adobe Captivate 2017 as we change the device output. So some pretty uh, quick, cool, easy stuff happening here. Uh, I could go in and change the theme if I wanted to. Um, once again, uh, some different themes available in this version of Captivate. Um, so some pretty easy, quick uh, stuff to, 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 to get you uh, up and running. And of course, we can uh, quickly publish, uh, publish that to um, the uh, to the LMS and let's just see how our presenter uh, example is going uh, and it's still processing there so we'll just um, wait for that to finish processing and 
that is pretty much it. So, um, look, um, hopefully we won't uh, keep you for too much longer, but uh, the whole purpose of this particular uh, presentation, of course, was to show you some uh, quick, rapid e-learning authoring using uh, three uh, quite different tools, all part of the Adobe uh, suite. We had the uh, Adobe uh, Presenter, um, a Video Express tool, which allows you to create software uh, demonstrations and have a host appearing at the same time. You may have seen a few of those on YouTube uh, already, especially if uh, you're looking at the Adobe uh, YouTube tutorials. So this is what they use. They use Presenter Video Express. Uh, we also looked at Presenter in PowerPoint. So you see that when it's uh, set up, it sets up a separate tab in PowerPoint. So uh, a lot of the rapid authoring happens because of PowerPoint. So a lot of this stuff can happen in PowerPoint uh, already. And last but not least, we just had a look at uh, getting uh, up and running quickly using uh, Adobe Captivate, using the themes uh, and using the slide layouts um, that we've got here, um, the different layouts with the slides and also with 2017 we looked at incorporating video uh, from YouTube or from, from, any, from any other source for that matter, and also being able to see how quickly we can uh, adopt responsive design into our, uh, into our development. So uh, look, that's, uh, that's it for me. Um, go and uh, get some, um, go and do some uh, authoring and developing and uh, stay in touch and we'd love to uh, see how you how you going with your uh, development. So uh, thanks for joining us and we'll, we'll see you soon.